How do you handle the lofty expectations following the greatest season in program history since Waynesburg's 1966 NAIA National Championship team? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, we just take what we learned from last season and, and uh, uh, you know, all the experience that I've had in the 24 years that I've had the privilege uh, to be in coaching. And, uh, and you learn to play, you know, the way we did last year. I think, uh, you know, we went into the season with a different approach. And I know a lot of the coaches have mentioned some of their strategies on how they're handling things. Either you're putting things behind you, you know, uh, or obviously you're trying to set a tone to look forward to the future. I mean, for us, you know, we just developed a no-nonsense, honest approach to the thing. And I don't think there was any other way uh, to put it. Uh, this, this league is, is so demanding. Uh, you know, the competition uh, is tough. Uh, you know, these guys are so impressive. Uh, you know, it's one of the things I've been thinking about before I had a chance to talk. So, you know, we took a good, honest approach at it. You know, and, and uh, you know, we'd start every week you know, with a 15-minute meeting and set the tone on the week uh, prior, uh, both academically as well as, as a football program. You know, we addressed uh, our situation uh, for the week that had passed, uh, and we uh, began to broach on the upcoming week. You know, we didn't care about who was in the ball game. You know, we, uh, we go out and we recruit these guys. Uh, we feel good about the recruiting process, and and, and, and we work and we find new ways to, to get guys' experience on the field. And then if for, un, for some unforeseen uh, reason we should get injured, you know, we're plugging that next guy in, and, and we're going to play with the same kind of confidence in that particular guy that we did you know, with our start. And you saw we had to do that losing you know, Brian in our game against Geneva. And we just kept forward thinking, kept forward thinking, and we just took one game at a time. And I know coaches talk about it all the time. Uh, but in the 24 years that I've coached, personally, you know, I lived that better personally than I had before. And uh, it kept better balance. I think our players responded because, you know, they have done such a great job for us. Uh, you know, we persevered through, through three years of some of the similar things that have been discussed in this room. And I just like the way we played. So we're going to continue that mantra here. Uh, and I'll probably do that as long as I'm, co as long as I'm coaching. Uh, I think it's a great approach to it. I spend a lot of time, you know, studying the psychological aspects of things. X's and O's are great. And I'm sure that there are a lot of other tacticians that are better uh, than me from an X and O standpoint. But, uh, you know, the kind of guys we recruit, the way we manage them uh, in our program uh, are, are, are things that I'll never stop continuing to work on. Uh, as a coach to find ways to do things better and, and, and relate with my players better, too. Coach, going into 2012, the quarterback position was one of your team's biggest questions. This year, you have Carter Hill back after playing eight games mm -hmm. and leading your team to an ECAC Bowl victory. How much has he improved since becoming your starter against Grove City on October 5th? You know, we played three quarterbacks last year. We, you know, we thought Tyler Fadigani was the guy, and he gave us everything that he had while he was healthy. Uh, Carter Hill, I mentioned at this conference last year, was coming back, and it, it took him a few you know, weeks to get under his belt. And while he was doing that, you know, Dave O'Brien out of Seton LaSalle High School did a great job and, and led us to a victory at Muskingum. Again, back to that mantra of it doesn't matter who's on the field, you know, get out there and execute and make something happen. So. You know, we feel that we have two good quarterbacks that are capable of winning football games for us. Uh, and Dave O'Brien is definitely one of those guys. You know, he did that for Coach Perry at Seton LaSalle. We love the job that he does there and the way he coaches. And uh, we were excited when we got him. Carter Hill happened to be recruited in the same class. You know, we we're excited that he thought that much of us to come back. Uh, and, uh, and I thought he did a great job blending in with the team. You know, it was, it was obviously, everybody is competitor. Everybody wants to jump in there and be that guy. Uh, Carter slow played the thing as well as anybody that I've ever seen. Egoless, you know, while he wasn't playing, he sat back and watched. When he, when he did come in and step into that role, you know, he took charge uh, with an enthusiasm, with a fire uh, that, that really changed the way we practiced on the offensive side of the ball. So he brings energy to the table. Uh, you know, last year when we came into this thing, it's nice to know 
it's nice to know we have two good quarterbacks going into this season, which is something we didn't know at this time last year. With Bill Backford's first full year as a starter, two of his favorite targets from last year, all-conference picks Christian Jackson, a wide receiver, and All-American Adam Moses is played at, at tight end, are both gone. Offensively, who do you believe has the best chance of softening the blow of their departures? Probably Bernie Thompson. Uh, Bernie's a Bernie's a little guy at a Union local high school uh, over in Ohio. That's uh, uh, soaking wet, probably about five six, hundred and forty five pounds, you know. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. He plays like he's six four, and two hundred pounds. He runs, he jumps. Uh, again, brings energy, you know, makes catches and makes plays. Other than that, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it by committee and with a team of tight ends. I think we got eight or ten tight ends on the roster. Um, you know, we, we, we don't have great speed to take the top off the thing on the outside. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be a little bit bigger on the outside. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to adjust and adapt to our personnel. But, you know, I'd say, I'd say out of the gate, you know, Bernie would be a guy. Coach, last question. While the Jacket offense will see plenty of new faces taking on bigger roles, the defense, which features eight returning starters, comes back mostly intact. Like my first team all conference picks Brandon Fedorka and Brian Gary. How good do you how good can your defensive unit be in two thousand thirteen? Well, I mean we could be as good as they want to be. I mean, pretty much. I mean everybody talked about speed and it's a philosophy for all of us in the recruiting process. I mean, we're gonna recruit speed and we're gonna play speed on the field at every position until we lose our ability to be physical at that position. That's that's when we'll take a little bit more physical over speed. So uh, I love us through the middle. Uh, you know, I love what Coach Venick's been able to do uh, with our defensive scheme. Uh, I, I think he's improved in a lot of areas. Uh, uh, in, in some ways, uh, you know, we got to guard against the explosive plays, but through the middle of the defense, you know, with Fedorka inside there and J.T. Thompson, and then with our linebacking core, as long as they could stay healthy, Ronnie Skinner, Kyle Ritchie, and John Sakura might be, you know, three of the better linebackers that we've had on the field at the same time. And then through the middle, uh, led by Brian, you know, Logan McEnany is just a, you know, is, is quietly a very impressive athlete. And then Mike Lebowski, uh, you know, uh, that, that came in and played for us last year. I mean, really, he's a special player, and uh, he's been great on the field for us. So they can be as good as they want to be. Brian, a leg injury robbed you of the end of your 2012 season. Can you tell us how the injuries healed up and how that might have motivated you going into your final season at Waynesburg? I mean, the injury was devastating when it happened, obviously. But the rehab went really well, and I worked really hard to get back to where I was. But I'm not really much worried about physically. I mean, mentally it messed with me a lot throughout the past year. But coming now and, like, I'm getting I'm back to where I was, I think that it helped me out mentally the most because I just have a different mindset on football and my knee's going to be great. I'm not worried about it. You've forged a reputation as one of the harder hitters in the President's Athletic Conference. Is that a uh, part of your game that you take pride in? Yes, I love hitting people. That's, that is one of my uh, fortes. but. I think this year I'm going to try and hold back on so much of the big hits because of the new rules and stuff. I don't want to be getting suspended. But I'm um, just going to try and form tackle a little bit more. I'm still going to go for big hits, obviously, but I'm going to try and smarten up my game a little bit on defense to decrease mistakes. The Waynesburg secondary, you know, along with the entire Jackets defense, brings back the bulk of his starters from a season ago. You heard from Coach, let's hear from you. Just how good can your group be? I think this could be one of our best defenses since I've been here, at least. Um, our secondary is, we, our entire defense just has a chemistry that is unreal. We all are on the same page at the same time. We get our calls in and everyone knows what they're doing on defense and the experience is just making unreal. I can't wait to play with my defense. It's been so long since I've been with them and uh, 
can't wait to be on the field with them. It's going to be a great year. Brad, last question. The majority of last year's starting quarterbacks in the conference are all expected to return. How vital do you think the play of Waynesburg secondary will be towards uh, picking up the second straight conference title and earning a berth in another postseason game? I mean, it's every year it's going to be, it comes down to defense and whose defense is going to play harder. Every offense in our conference is good. We all have good quarterbacks. But the secondary, our secondary is ran by Coach V, so we got it going pretty well. But I don't think it's a, much of a worry going into the season about the quarterbacks in the conference. It's just a natural thing. You've got to stop the offense.